Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the five day precipitation and temperature from the UK Met Office run and then we'll have a look at the mid to longer range look at the GFS, GM, East WF and the ensembles as it does look like things will be turning a little bit chillier perhaps as we head towards the end of April and start of May. We've got a lot of blocking around at the moment and it could be heading northwards towards the end of the month and start of May um, and that could cause us to see some Arctic air Airflows. Nothing majorly cold, of course, being sort of middle to end of spring now, but still could be chilly with still colder air masses above the Arctic, and it could give return to overnight frosts and cooler days. Um, still won't be anything terrible by any means, but it could turn things a little bit chillier um, and a lot chillier than what we had recently, really. Highs of maybe low teens, uh, maybe even only single digits in a few spots, which I know for some people is not ideal at all. And of course, frost could be quite damaging for plants and, uh, and gardeners in general. So hopefully we don't see it, but there is increasing trends now that it could be coming. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. So at the moment, we do have generally quite dry conditions. It's not too bad of a day out there. Um, now, if we still had warmer air masses around and not sort of easterly winds, it would be a sort of low 20s day today. But only seeing high teens to mid-teens for many. Uh, and that's because we have an easterly flow, high pressure moving northwards, and generally cooler air masses now mixing in. So even though the sun is getting to work, it's not quite um, as warm as it has been recently, but still a pretty decent day. We do have weather fronts coming in from the west, and that's a continued theme we've seen across parts of Western Ireland and parts of Western Scotland. Precipitation moving in, heavy precipitation for some, and it will continue uh, in, in the west, but it should peter out coming up against the high pressure. Generally, though, it is pretty decent out there, pretty dry, and there is some blue skies. If we do have a look at those temperatures, as around 3 p.m., you can see pretty decent. None of these real oranges building up today, so no high teens, low 20s, but perhaps still 16, 17 degrees in a few spots, maybe the isolated high teens here or there in the south, but generally it's quite widely mid to low teens. With sunshine, feeling pretty decent, but along those eastern coasts still being a little bit chilly. So do have a look at the UK Met Office run, look at those five-day precipitation and temperature. Now you can see as I'm recording this, uh, Wednesday afternoon, you can see very little cloud and only that real rain across parts of Western Sco uh, Western Nor uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland and a few showers across Southern Scotland, nothing too crazy. But through the evening, that weather front does decay in the west, and we still have a decent day um, into Thursday. Very similar today, in fact, with uh, generally dry conditions. Some thicker cloud further west was in a few showers across parts of Western Ireland. And that continues, and by Friday, a few more showers around with thicker cloud, as we do start to put in chillier air masses in from the east. And that will continue through to Saturday. More precipitation, lighter rain, and just generally more cloudy conditions. So even though it's still be generally dry, those temperatures will be dipping. And by Sunday, a few heavier showers in the south and southwest. But generally, cloud does break a bit more with uh, with a little bit more of a stable air mass. Uh, so you can see it just continues really easily flow, generally dry, more precipitation chances around, but nothing too crazy. If we do have a close max temperatures, see pretty chilly overnight uh, as we do have colder air masses moving in. But by this afternoon, you see temperatures perhaps peaking in around 16, 17, maybe 18 degrees, as I said. So decent, but not quite as high um, as the weekend or last week. As we move through to Thursday, you can see those temperatures once again getting perhaps up to 17, 18 degrees in the far south and the southwest, but generally more around 14 to 17 degrees. So still decent but feeling a little bit chillier with that easterly flow. By Friday, though, as I said, with that cooler air mass coming in, more precipitation and thicker cloud, hold those temperatures down, maybe only max of 14, 15 degrees, and more widely, 10 to 13. In a few areas, as I said, mid-high sing mid single digits. That continues through to Saturday, could be sort of uh, the peak in the south, 20 degrees perhaps along the south coast further northwards with more of an easterly flow really struggling around 10 to 14 degrees perhaps 7 or 8 degrees along that east coast feeling pretty raw and by sunday similar sort of theme with 17 18 degrees further south and westwards and quite chilly further eastwards and northwards and that just continues and it's all because if we have a look at the air mass we do have chilly air masses coming in from the east especially across part of the northern england minus five degrees at 850 hpa that would be snow worthy if it was in winter but of course being in april end of april early may we're going to just be seeing chillier than average conditions with this feeling colder 
Um, so yeah, probably cold, quite a cold air mass moving in, and along an easterly breeze, it's going to feel uh, chilly with wind chill. So we do have a look at the mid to long range, have a look at the GFS, GM, and ESWF, see what it's showing over the next couple of weeks. Now you can see the high pressure building in at the moment, and that's why generally things are dry, but further west with that low pressure system, we're seeing more precipitation. Beyond that, we do start to pull in that easterly wind by Thursday, Friday time, and that's when we start to get those temperatures dropping. as more of a raw easterly wind coming in with cold air masses coming up from Scandinavia, and it's going to keep those temperatures down. Beyond that, we get cut off low in the south, could increase precipitation towards the end of the weekend and start of next week. But as I said, not expecting anything too crazy. It's as we head towards day 10, though, um, around... Um, uh, yeah, as we head towards day 10... In around 240 hours, we do see high pressure trying to build up towards Greenland, but on this GFS run, it doesn't quite come off, and instead that low dives into the North Atlantic, and instead of giving us chillier conditions, it gives us really unsettled conditions, but not with the colder air. Yes, it will be chilly, it will be around, or slightly below average, but with that low pressure spinning around, a lot of heavy showers, and of those 850 HP temperatures, not crazy cold, but chillier than average, um, and uh, very unsettled within that. And right towards the end of the run, we do see, again, low pressure to our west, spiralling in showers. Yes, it could put a squeeze in the ice bars, bringing the air up from the south for a time, but it's not great. Yes, it's not quite as cold uh, as some of the other runs we'll have a look at, uh, with more of a northerly flow um, in those runs, but it is still chillier, and it's even more unsettled than the other runs, which do have more high pressure at play. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, we do have an easterly flow coming in, and with that easterly flow strengthens towards the end of the week. And then as we head towards day 10, we start to see more of a northerly flow. And at day 10, high pressure building up towards Greenland, and you can see the air mass is coming in from the north and the northeast. Quite cold air is moving in. Now, it's not cold at the moment on this run, but you run it another, uh, along another couple of days, all this cold air is going to plunge into Scandinavia. And because we have a general north or easterly flow, it is going to be pretty cold beyond that and that is something we really do need to keep an eye on and you look at those temperature deviations bitterly cold air all the way over scandinavia svalbard and greenland that is plunging into europe not guaranteed to hit the uk but it will come close uh, if not hitting the uk so yeah it does look like gm run is still going for that colder conditions to end april and start may if we have a look at the ecm and wf run see how that does compare again high pressure over to our north Quite a brisk easterly flow and that continues. And as we head toward day seven, all the way out to day 10, you can see more of a northerly flow. You follow those ice bars back towards Scandinavia and Svalbard. And right towards day 10, high pressure building up towards Greenland. And we are starting to see that northerly flow develop. Bitterly cold air over Svalbard, as I said, Greenland and Scandinavia plunging out of the Arctic. Really cold at 850 HP all the way across northern Europe. And it will be getting even colder than that um, with that air plunging southwards. And that is something we, of course, need to keep an eye on. As I said, not going to bring Arctic-like, bitterly cold, snowy weather. But it's going to bring chilly, colder than average, feeling quite cold, feeling like it was January or February. And could give some wintriness over higher ground exclusively. No, not expecting anything to lower levels at all, even if we do get the coldest sort of air masses through. And the biggest impact, more likely, will be, of course, the colder temperatures, feeling chilly, but also the overnight frost, which could be damaging. So we do finish up, have a look at the ensembles. If we start with the GFS, um, now the GFS is very split. Over the next sort of week, it's pretty consistent in and around, slightly above, slightly below average at times, uh, more below average in, towards day seven. But it's beyond that, where the ensemble mean is around or slightly below average, but there is massive spread, some going really mild, uh, some going much colder. You see the operational one goes much colder and then much milder. So a little bit of an interesting run there from the operational one, as we saw. But the majority are either going cold or going warm, and it's all because of the positioning of the high pressure. I would favour cold, because as we'll see with the min in a minute, the East and Relief ensembles are going colder. So it does look like there are some outlier GFS runs building that trend up quite a lot and generally most are going to go colder it is quite unsettled as well so there is going to be more precipitation around most likely in the form of showers not expecting anything crazy by any means but still could be pretty unsettled out there 
Again, if we have a look at the ECMBF ensembles, look at the 850 HP temporary precipitation, you can see in the longer term, it is much, much colder than average. Next seven days, pretty similar to the GFS, but most of the runs are around or below the, the mean for 1981 to 2010. Some are much, much colder than the mean. Again, that's minus five or below. Now, I'm not expecting minus five, perhaps in London, but perhaps further north, it's it could be quite likely, um, and generally still chilly enough for overnight frosts. Precipitation signal is up, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, generally colder than average. If you look at those two meter temperatures and precipitation, you can see generally long term returning to low teens in London, where generally it, 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 it's should be around mid-teens this time of year. Low teens down to 10, 11, 12 degrees, even colder on some of the runs. And remember, the mean here is getting skewed by some much milder runs. You can see one there getting into the low 20s. That's skewing the mean a little bit. So 9, 10, 11 degrees is what a lot of these ensemble members are showing. Some much colder in around 5, 6, 7 degrees. So very, very interesting seeing that. It is something we do need to keep a very close eye on. No guarantees at this stage. But, um, yeah. It's just something we do, of course, need to keep an eye on what's happening with it. At this stage, as I said, though, um, we've just got to keep an eye on the next few, uh, next week. And then beyond that, we have to keep an eye on this colder evolution. Not guaranteed, as I said, but it is becoming increasingly likely as we progress. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the summery weather we're seeing, at least with sunshine, even though the temperatures are not quite as warm. Um, and I'll see you again for another video soon.